had a spare afternoon, access to a police training facility, and a 2011 Ford Mustang GT, this is the kind of ridiculousness that's possible. And yes, it's as fun as it looks. Perhaps the best part about the new 2011 Mustang is that it features a proper 5-liter V8. It's a 5.0. You know, Vanilla Ice had a 5.0. It's about time we got a 5.0. But his 5.0 never had 412 horsepower. Now, the hooligan in me wants to focus on tire smoking debauchery, but there's a lot more to the 2011 Mustang than just that. Well, that's pretty cool. For starters, the new Mustang GT, even with 412 horsepower, matches or exceeds the fuel economy of the 2010 model. So the automatic gets 18, 25. The manual gets 17, 26. Impressive fuel economy numbers. I mean, I won't be getting those numbers, but they're theoretically possible. You have your choice of two transmissions, a six-speed automatic or a six-speed manual. Now, I'm sure the automatic is lovely for an automatic, but then you'd miss out on the manual. I mean, look at these short shifts. Somewhere right now, there's a guy who makes his living selling short shift kits for Mustangs who's not sure how he's going to get his kid through college. I mean, seriously. The springs, dampers, and stabilizer bars have all been tweaked as well. In fact, this is a Mustang that wants to turn. That wasn't always the case. I don't know who the dark wizard is over at Ford who's in charge of suspension tuning on the Mustang, but they've clearly done their work. It's a great handling, capable, easy to drive car, even with the hilariously antiquated live rear axle in the back. Axle Tramp. It's not just a good name for a fog hat cover band, it's one of the issues that can pop up with a live rear axle, during big smoky burnouts for example. Other live axle concerns? Hit a bump mid-corner and the rear will step out. Also the ride can be a little bit rough on the uh, dodgier sections of freeway. On the other hand, forget all that. Other quick observations? The huge glass sunroof is awesome, but at two grand, it's kind of pricey. The iPod interface doesn't suck, even in this non-navigation equipped Mustang. You can easily scroll right to higher lettered artists. Our car featured a backup camera. The thing is, I didn't even know the first time I backed up. Opt for the nav system, unless you want to rely on this little guy not to back over your kid's bike. Ford Mikey, it's new for the Mustang, and it lets parents control certain aspects of the vehicle's performance, like top speed, the ability to turn off stability control, that kind of stuff. It'll keep your kids from doing this kind of stuff. Styling carries over essentially unchanged from the 2010 refresh, except for the 5.0 Mustang badge. More than flashy stripes or wheels, this little baby will earn you respect on the streets, if you're a Fast and the Furious type looking for respect on the streets. Inside, there's more proof that Ford's got its head on straight. Plenty of high quality materials and some impressively swank optional leather seats. Starting price for the Mustang GT is about $30,500. Do a little math, and that equals $74 for every one of its 412 horsepower. Now, you could save a little money by buying the V6. Its 305 horsepower V6 equals out to about $75 per horsepower. I mean, yeah, you save some money on the front end, but don't you want to maximize your car buying dollar? These are tough times. Go for the Mustang GT. Can you really afford not to? For more automotive news, please visit the latest news section of KBB.com.